we are going to check out both of these pH meters. This one's by Rapid Test, and this one is looks like it doesn't really even have a name, but this is a generic pH moisture and light meter. And we're going to use them both and see how they work in our worm bed, worm bin. So there we go. So we're starting with the rapid test soil pH meter with the probe and the wire. I opened it up and they have some instructions here and a probe cleaner so that the end of the pH meter probe can be cleaned off after every use or the tip can become pitted and then it won't be any good. So you don't want to leave this in the worm bed. Uh, you want to clean it each time and then take your readings. Um, and this is this has a lot of instructions here as to how you change, how you can uh, adjust pH in in your in your soil, and that happens to work for a worm bed. So I'm going to adapt that for worms for you, for red worms, European night crawlers, and African night crawlers. And then here they give you a preference, a pH preference list for a whole bunch of plants. So it's a pretty neat setup, uh, a lot of information, and then some uh, and some good directions right here to help you help walk you through it. So we're going to get to work with with this one and uh, see what happens. So we've unboxed this and we're ready to go. I'm going to open up our handy dandy worm bin. And the reason that I chose this bin is because you can see there's a lot of activity here. This is a sign that the worms have been climbing up the sides of the worm bed. And the reason for that could be that the, uh, the pH or something in this bedding is not making them happy. This is just a piece of plastic that we, it's woven plastic that we use to cover the food and keep the worms eating at the surface. And this is newspaper, just fresh dried newspaper. You can see the food here. So we have food, we have a ton of worms in there breeding. A lot of capsules, I see a lot of capsules. Right there, if you can see some. Now, we want to check to see why they're crawling. So maybe it's just because it's been a little humid and, and rainy, uh, or maybe there's something more to this. So we have the uh, pH here, pH meter. I stuck the, I'm sticking the probe in about five inches. And you can see from this that we're right about seven. So that's on the alkaline side. So that's, that is not acidic at all. Um, that's actually, it's actually pretty good right there. So you don't want to be any higher than seven, but you don't want to be any lower than six because then you're getting into the acid range. So this, this bin's pretty good that we're not going to do anything with this from uh, this standpoint to correct the pH. And, um, and you can see, I pulled this back out and the, the last reading sticks there, but it definitely, it definitely moved from when I put it in. And, uh, that's a nice strong reading. So, we're going to uh, close this up and move on to another bin and find one that has some acid so that we can correct it. Okay, now this is another another bin. This is African night crawlers. So these should be African night crawler babies. Um, and African night crawlers make acid. They're, they, they, just by their very nature, they create acidic conditions. Now they can tolerate the uh, they can tolerate everything being a little more acidic than red worms can, but they but uh, they still need to watch. We you still need to be very careful because if it gets too acidic, they will they'll just start to crawl out or they'll die, and it'll happen quickly. So I'm going to we're going to test this. So you can see it's at about seven before I put it in there, and I'm sticking it in there. Trying to get a reading. Oops. Keeps falling right through. So we want to get a good reading where it's touching. This is, that's not our good reading. That's a good reading. So I just, 
I tested these. I, I had to go through a bunch of worm beds and bends until I found one that was acidic because uh, we treat our, our worm beds, you know, uh, all the time. We're always testing them and we're always checking them out. And uh, so it took me a while to find one that had a problem. And this is definitely one that has a problem. So we're very close to having an issue here. We're on the acid side. Um, this is, the, like I said, these are uh, African night crawlers. So we have to be very careful with this. So now, what do we do about it? There are a couple different things that you could do to treat an acid condition like this. The first one is to use powdered limestone. So you could you could get powdered limestone at a agricultural store, or you could get it from us. We sell it in in uh, one pound containers. You could also get uh, 32 ounce, but um, the 16 ounce container is looks is like this comes just like this with a shaker top and you basically just it comes with instructions obviously and you just lightly you would just light lightly coat the bedding and then you want to mix this in so you would mix mix that into the soil and then and then you coat again and then give it an, a light, light watering. You don't want to go too crazy with the watering because you don't want to create anaerobic conditions. You want to keep this bed nice and fluffy because the air, that air, was, it will help cure that acid condition too. So you want to just, you want, to, you want it so that it breaks apart like that, nice and fluffy. The worms can kind of swim around in there and uh, get from place to place. So that's one way. The other way you could take care of it is eggshells lots and lots of eggshells so eggshells will automatically help with acid conditions and, the, and it'll treat the soil but the worms also love the eggshells so they will go all over in there and eat all that good stuff right up and you'll come back and you won't have any eggshells left so that's another great thing to do you could you could uh, feed them just the way you get the, the yolk out of the egg you get the egg out of the eggshell and and crumble the eggshell and put it in there they'll eat everything now the other thing you could do is if you notice that you're you have anaerobic conditions so how would you know well the bedding will be wet it'll smell bad a good i don't know if you can smell that smell <laughs> see a good bedding will smell earthy when it smells rotten that means it's anaerobic so let's say this is a wet bed uh, it's mushy it smells you would take crumpled dry newspaper and you put that in various spots like this and you cover it over now you're probably thinking why would you put dry newspaper in there doesn't it have to be moist well it's going to absorb the water from the bedding and then it's going to uh, create a spot so that the worms can go and eat that bedding it'll be uh, it'll, it'll be uh, more neutral more alkaline less acidic so they'll migrate out of the bedding if it's if it's um, anaerobic and they'll go they'll go there the other thing that they'll do too is that if you if you just put it in like that they will come up into the paper if the bedding is not to their liking and they will start eating the paper and they'll live there and that'll give you a chance to aerate the bedding treat it with lime put eggshells in there and and uh give it a lot of air a lot of time and and you'll uh, you'll correct it and you'll have happy healthy worms Again, you don't want this. You don't want to have a pH that's too high, because alkaline isn't good either. But between six and seven is perfect. Anything lower than a six, you'll want to treat. And that goes for red worms, European nightcrawlers, and Africans. Africans will naturally be a little more acidic than the other two worms, but you still want to watch that because when African nightcrawlers turn bad, when they start to go, uh, and their bedding goes sour, it it goes it goes bad quickly, and you'll lose a lot of money in worms. Uh, very very quickly and that is the first one so let's check the uh, let's test out this second tester okay I've unwrapped the second tester and I've uh, I've put the probe in so these this is these are these have two probes one is for moisture and one is for pH and I stuck them in and um, and I've been moving it around and testing it so we've added some lime and done some things to correct this pH but you can see we're pretty much getting a similar reading to the other one where it's uh, it's right around a between a, a five and a six it keeps going back and forth but 
as you can see it, when it stops it starts to once we get a good connection but between it's it seems to be about a five, between five and a six okay pretty much the same reading as the other one between a five and a six so this is showing that this is little on the acid side so we're going to continue treating this with lime and with eggshells and uh, see what we get so pretty much the same reading between the two probes uh, the two meters this one and the other one now this one is interesting because it also has a light meter and it also has a moisture meter so it'll tell you if you're if you're if your bedding is wet or dry and uh, you can see that this is telling us that we have wet bedding and I just stuck it into a wet area and then it's given us the, uh, the the pH reading that of about a five between a five and a six. So these are both both pretty decent meters. Um, this one just does pH, but I like I do like this one because as a probe you can move it around. It has a wire. Uh, you don't have to just stick it in and, and do it. Um, this other one I like because it has moisture and light. The, this one is slightly less expensive than, than the other one. Um, but this one, if you also have plants that you want to test lighting and water, this is probably a pretty pretty good meter that'll do all that stuff for you. Well, that's it. I'm going to go wash my hands now and be done with this. So thank you.